you're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. This is our last show for 2017 of the Paracast. Some people might wish it was our last show forever, but that's not going to happen. We're going to be observing our 12th anniversary in February. They said it couldn't be done, but it was. But we've assembled with me and Chris, Lauren Coleman. And we're going to talk about his book in just a few moments, his newest book called Mothman, Evil Incarnate. And it's subtitled The Unauthorized Companion to the Mothman Prophecies. That's a companion. If it was a sequel, I guess we'd call it what, Lauren? After the Mothman? Or more prophecies. Uh, Who knows? Or prophecies, too. No, it would be Caterpillar Man, wouldn't it? Well, it'd have to be zombie something, because if John Keel did it, since he's dead, that would open up a whole new can of worms. The Mothman Dead. Right. Like Walking Dead. All right. Before we get to that. Flying Dead. (laughs) I wanted to bring up to our listeners something. We started this conversation after the Paracast, which is the premium podcast that comes with subscriptions to the Paracast Plus. And you go to plus.theparacast.com for more information. But we talked about the recent revelation, starting with the New York Times article, that at the behest of former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, they allocated $22 million for a UFO program. And I guess we're, as they say, a little skeptical of what that's going to do. There was an article also from Nick Redfern in his blog, basically saying he didn't expect much of anything. And bear in mind here what's going on. We have... A U.S. senator, a powerful U.S. senator, this is when the Senate majority was in the Democratic Party, powerful U.S. senator, interested in UFOs, and he's a friend of a billionaire by the name of Robert Bigelow. We all know about that character, right? And we know because he said so on 60 Minutes that he believes UFOs are real and that they're alien. So I wondered here whether this whole thing was set up to mollify Senator Reid And also to give some money to Bigelow, because that's what happened. You know, they gave him the money to do the research. And what happens within a year or so after that? Bigelow goes to MUFON, offering them money to do some research. That didn't work out so well. But what we've learned now is that money didn't come from Bigelow's pocket. It came from the U.S. government. Oh, well. Did Bigelow really need $22 million to do UFO research? Of course not. Just an observation, Chris. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I guess billionaires, they, they never have enough money. That's why they're billionaires. But We don't want to get into politics, but that's why they cut taxes, because they need more money. You no, know, I've, I've been warning people since the whole thing uh, broke that, you know, everybody's all gaga, and they think that this is the... Uh, you know, the beginning of the big uh, the big D disclosure. And I keep reminding them, look, these people have been lying to us for 70 years. What makes you think they're going to be telling us the truth now? I mean, you know, I, I just it's just very hard for me to believe that people will just suddenly go into this convenient, complete denial surrounding, you know, how the subject's been treated within the government. And it, it just it's just <laughs> It, to me, is downwind to the fish market, like I explained last week on the show. And I, I don't really see this as being anything more than a bunch of grandstanding. And, um, you know, sure, the government's admitting this and the government's admitting that. But uh, it's this whole thing. Um, there's really there's a lot of smoke, but there's not much fire. And the thing to bear in mind, too, that if the U.S. government has already had the opportunity to look at alien craft, crash spaceships like Roswell or other places, certainly not Aztec, and alien bodies. They've had all this technology. They've been getting gun camera photos of UFOs and other things for 70 years. Why would a new investigation in the 2000s make a difference? If the government has something to disclose... How would this impact that? If they knew all this stuff about UFOs that they allegedly know, why do they need to spend another $22 million on the subject? Well, Just to mollify a U.S. senator, it goes back to that. If I can make a comment, 
anytime. Uh, what interests me about this is the broader framework. I think it's an old boys network. I think they wanted to spend some money, help out a friend. And, of course, Bigelow is connected to Skywalker Ranch. Bigelow has had some Bigfoot sightings even. So there's uh, – and then you get the whole remote viewing people and John Alexander. And uh, I think there's a whole kettle of fish here. Maybe it does smell downriver. But it could be what really occurred was that they got caught uh, a little bit. But I do think that the Big D – is more about disinformation and denial than it is disclosure. <laughs> yeah, a, a different D word. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and $22 million, it sounds like a lot to me. It's not. But it's not to the government. It's not to the military. It's not to Bigelow. No. So it, it's all, this is kind of laughable, but it is interesting that it comes right back to Las Vegas. And uh, I yeah. think... There's more going on in Las Vegas than we know about, you know, from uh, multiple shootings to the secret behind Blade Runner 2049. You know, lots of things point back to Las Vegas. And this uh, this whole thing is Las Vegas written all over it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Blade Runner 2049. What about it? Well, if you haven't seen the movie, I don't like spoilers, but Las Vegas is part of it. How about half a spoiler? I don't think I'll be seeing the movie for a little while until it's free on cable TV. Well, Las Vegas turns out to be the place where uh, a major nuclear attack occurs. It's where, um, you know, Harrison Ford is ho holed up and a lot of things that everybody wonders what was happening in the first Blade Runner. And, it, you know, everybody fantasizes about going off to Montana or something. Well, people went to Las Vegas. <laughs> so it's just, it's pretty bizarre. And the movie came out, you know, it was already in production. It was already going to be shown. And then it comes out the same week that there was a massive shooting in, in Las Vegas. There's just a lot of strange things there. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the China Syndrome coming out a week after uh, Three Mile Island. <laughs> right. Now, I'm just going to look here at Blade Runner. Blade Runner... Didn't do so well. I mean, for movies in general, it did decent. It grossed $258 million, Blade Runner 2049. But the production budget was $150 million. And in movie parlance, you've got to gross twice the budget minimum, plus allow for promotion costs to show a profit. So all in all, this movie probably lost $100 million. But it's not over. The future will show that it's a classic in terms of the um, Prometheus alien universe that all of these films live in. So it's a very, very predictive kind of film, and it'll have a cult following. You'll see. Yeah, plus, plus they have, in fact, in worldwide uh, earnings and DVD that sales. That is worldwide DVDs earnings, Chris. Chris, that includes worldwide box office, global box office. Oh, well, the DVD is coming out this next week, so. Yeah, it just went digital this week. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll wait till we're past that, till it's down to the 99-cent rentals, okay? <laughs> they do have 99-cent rentals. I believe you. Right. When it gets to 99 cents, I'll do it. I won't do it for five ninety nine. Although they made things a little bit better now. If you want to do a digital download, it used to be you had to watch the movie completely started within 30 days, but once you start it, you had 24 hours before it self-destructed. They changed that to 48 hours, so we have some measure of fairness. But let's get on here. I don't know if this has a Las Vegas connection or not. The book is Mothman Evil Incarnate. Lauren Coleman is here with Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have 
a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Attention type 2 diabetics. If you or a loved one has taken Invokana, Invokamet, or Invokamet XR or other inhibitors for type 2 diabetes and suffered amputation of the toes, feet, or legs, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA has warned that Invokana, Invokamet, or Invokamet XR and other inhibitors for type 2 diabetes cause an increased role in amputations of the toes, feet, and legs. If you or a loved one has taken Invokana, Invokamet, or Invokamet XR or other inhibitors, for type 2 diabetes and suffered amputation of the toes, feet, or legs, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk at 800-475-7607. That's 800-475-7607. Again, 800-475-7607. Call now. This is an advertisement paid non-attorney spokesperson. www.injuryhelpdesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Does the current world crisis in North Korea or our domestic crisis right here in America concern you? Well, I know it concerns me. My friends over at Legacy Food Storage have solutions in the event there's the inevitable. What's the inevitable? Civil unrest, a run on your local grocery store. And here's my question to you. If this happens, how do you feed your children? How do you feed your grandchildren? Legacy Food Storage has the solutions. In fact, they can help you implement a simple plan to take care of your needs in the event of the inevitable. By calling them right now, I have authorized them to give you a special 20% discount at checkout by simply using GCN. Call 888-543-7345 or visit them at LegacyFoodStorage.com. That's 888-543-7345 or visiting them at LegacyFoodStorage.com. Make sure you use GCN at checkout for an incredible 20% discount. Don't be a victim. Take control of your life now. If you're talking, they will hear you every single time. Why are we getting killed like this? Kyle's not here. Got caught drinking beer in the park a couple of nights ago. Really? Yeah. Zero tolerance. He's out for the season. Harsh. Hey, he knew not to drink. We've made that clear to all of our kids, right? Uh, no, not really. Bill, if we don't tell them what we expect and why they shouldn't drink, how are they going to know? Talk. They hear you. Hear you. can do it if you try. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Chris is presenting not his voice for Bigfoot, but his voice for Mothman. So, (laughs) Lauren Coleman... Why did you decide to do this book? Well, as you may recall, I did a book in 2002. What, what happened in 2001, I was, you know, I've been a friend of John Keel's for a long time, since the 60s, the late 60s, and uh, was very involved in helping him with different kinds of cryptid and cryptozoological and Bigfoot phenomena for his book, uh, Strange Creatures, which came out in 1970. And in 1970, he put a little chapter in there about Mothman. And I knew about Mothman. I'd been interviewing people, been traveling there, been talking to people. But, of course, wasn't as prominent as John Keel. Well, in 2001, I was writing a book 
about Mothman because I thought I had something to contribute. And all of a sudden, I get a call from Sony Screen Gems, and they said, we hear you're doing a book on Mothman. Could you speed it up? <laughs> and, and I said, what? You know, I, I write on my own pace. And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. We don't want to pressure you. But we have a movie coming out next year, and we'd like to have your book come out at the same time the movie comes out because the whole idea of our book, uh, of our movie, it's based on John Keel's book, but his book came out in 75. And we kind of like to have a new book out that really um, reinforced the fact of our tagline, which is based on a true story. So I said, well, I'll see what I can do. And I actually was able to get the book done. Uh, it was published by Paraview. And then they called me up later. We kept talking and they wanted me to, uh, they flew me out to California to do um, a news conference with all these science fiction magazines. And I, and I said, well, you know, I'd like to bring my kids. My kids were like middle school kind of age. And they said, sure, come on, here's tickets. You know, here's a car. Here's a motel, you know, in, in Beverly Hills. So, of course, I'm going to do all of this. I had great fun. And then they said, you know, by the way, John Keel is blind. He had a cataract op operation. They left staples in his eyes and he can't do a promotion. Would you do the promotion for the movie and promote your book too? So I said, sure. So when the movie came out in January, I actually did 400 radio interviews in one month. Wow. I I remember one day I was on like seven, eight radio shows, one after another, as well as all the big ones like Paracast. I'm sure I was back back in those days. I was on there talking about Mothman. So I wrote the book. It was a pretty basic book about Mothman, but I called it Mothman and Other Curious Encounters. So I did information on Flatwoods Monster, on the spawn of Keel you know, different kind of cryptids and winged weirdies and different things like that that I'd written about in Fate magazine and had kind of expanded all those chapters and, and made it into, you know, a nice little book. And then the movie, you know, it was a very successful kind of psychological thriller. Uh, was done by Mark Pellington, who had previously done MTV videos, but also he'd done Arlington Road. So he had a very conspiratorial mind about him. And he wasn't interested in the UFO part of uh, the Mothman book. He was only interested in the Mothman and kind of psychological thriller. So on the radio shows and on afterwards, I started noticing there was all this bad luck in the wake of Mothman. You know, sometimes after I get off a radio show, uh, light bulbs would burst in my house or people would talk about you know, somebody dying or, uh, and so I started collecting names of individuals connected to Mothman, either the eyewitnesses or were in the movie. And I knew that from Poltergeist and other movies like Exorcist, there was always this business about movie curses. But like with Poltergeist, no more than six people died that were connected to the movie. Well, I started collecting these names and within a year or two, I had 80 names of people connected to the Mothman movie and to the Mothman incidents that had died. Uh, some old age, but some of them were suicide. Some of them were young. Like actually Mark Pellington's wife, uh, within uh, two years after the movie came out, she mysteriously got sick and died after a four-month illness that has never quite been explained. And she was 42. So, you know, one thing led to another, and I said, oh, I got to write another book, got to write another book. I thought about writing that book in 2006, and then all my bad luck started happening. Lots of operations, a younger brother died, my mother died. Altogether, I, it took me until 2017 to write this book, but it's, it's really about the bad luck part of uh, Mothman. Well, the biggest example, I think, of bad luck is something you've already mentioned at the beginning. John Keel's life wasn't too great for him after that. No, it wasn't. He had lots of bad luck and even 
reportedly got $80,000 for the movie. And it didn't change his life at all. He just tried to catch up on his debts and never really changed as far as he was still poor. His health went downhill. There were false rumors about him dying several times. He was estranged from his family. And towards the end, as I mentioned in the book, he started writing. He wrote actually an afterword to the the new edition, the tour edition of the Mothman Prophecies. And he just ravaged all his old friends, said things like his friends had stole his material. And he was just crusty, as I call him. I, I think we all still love John Keel, but we knew that dementia, bad luck, uh, Mothman curse just made him into something none of us recognized. I know that we tried to get him on the Paracast. I know our former co-host got his phone number from Tim Beckley. I don't think mm-hmm. Keel... Now, Keel was pretty ornery around this time, the last couple of years of his life. And he just chewed out my poor co-host and probably chewed out Beckley for daring to give out that phone number. But he isn't the only UFO researcher of prominence who died in, shall we say, surroundings where they were really, really poor. Richard Hall also had similar problems, and he was never involved with Mothman. Yeah. Well, I mean, people, there are a lot of bad luck that's connected with being in this field because none of us are really after money. We have a passion about the field. There are, of course, those few that try to go after the money. But in general, what I tried to do is look at the thread of Mothman, like Jim Keith, who we all know for black helicopters and and a lot of other work he did. He also had a major theory that Mothman was nothing but a CIA experiment in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, in which everybody was being given LSD. Let's explore that in our next segment. Lauren Coleman, Okay. Gene and Chris, you're in. The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Warning, if you're drowning in debt you can't afford, do not let the credit card companies trick you into thinking that you have to pay it all back, because you don't. What the credit card companies don't want you to know is that there's actually a way to get debt-free without paying off your entire debt or going bankrupt. If you have $5,000 or more in credit card debt, you now have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. For free information, call Credit Associates now. 1-800-959-5759. We'll even show you how much money you could save. If you can't afford to pay off all your debt, do not let the credit card companies trick you into thinking that you have to. Call Credit Associates now for free information on how to get debt-free faster than you ever thought possible without debt consolidation or bankruptcy. We depend on your success and offer a guarantee, so there's no risk. For free information, call now. 1-800-959-5759. That's 1-800-959-5759. 1-800-959-5759. What would your life be like if you woke up each morning with new vitality, feeling better than you have in years, and you noticed a difference in your sleeping patterns, blood sugar levels, and had a sense of well-being overall? There's something that is changing thousands of people's lives, and you could be one of them. It's called... Called Heart and Body Extract. 
Sharon Harris, co-creator of Heart and Body Extract, talks about the positive effects of Heart and Body Extract. What happens with the formula Heart and Body Extract is it's giving the body the necessary vitamins, minerals, amino acids, enzymes, and phytonutrients so, so the body will heal itself. And yes, the body does have the ability to balance blood pressure, balance cholesterol, clean and unclog the arteries. It can also work on uh, balancing the circulation for diabetics. So the body is an amazing thing. It simply needs some help so it has the tools to heal itself. Heart and Body Extract gets results. To order your two-month supply, call now, toll-free at 866-295-5305. Order online at hbextract.com. People search the Internet for everything, including you. With a few clicks, information from your past can be quickly discovered. From business deals gone wrong to misleading reviews, negative articles, and unflattering images. Studies show 78% of people search for someone online before doing business with them. Will they find the real you? With ReputationDefender.com, you can establish a positive internet presence. ReputationDefender.com pioneered the field with over a decade of experience, serving thousands of successful individuals and businesses. We use patented, award-winning systems to boost positive content and suppress negative material. Don't let the internet define you. Take control of your reputation today with ReputationDefender.com. For your quick, free reputation analysis, call 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771, 800-831-0771, or visit reputationdefender.com. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. Okay, Lauren Coleman, we're talking about the person who suggests that Mothman was an LSD experiment. But I just wonder here whether any other events, if that was true, were actually experiments rather than real paranormal things. Well, we don't know, do we? Obviously, you've got different things coming out of MK Ultra that makes you think that some experimentation was going on, but not to be distracted from the story I want to tell you, is Jim Keith, the guy that had that theory, appeared at Burning Man, fell off the stage there, and was taken to a hospital, and they were doing some kind of repair on his knee, and he died on the operating table. So it just was one of those names and people that I actually knew that I had to add to the list. I don't know if there's LSD experiments going on and people are hallucinating monsters here and I there. I don't think so. Right. But I'm saying that you confront something as incredible as Mothman, people are going to come up with their own theories. Some of them are farther out than thinking that Mothman may be a giant owl that's been undiscovered or uh, some kind of entity from a UFO. I mean, there's... There's as many theories as there are people connected with Mothman. I just try to look at the facts, ma'am and mister, uh, and just try to, like Charles Fort, write the data down. And the data says to me that some incredible things are going on with the people, with the psychology, the sociology, all connected to Mothman. Have we learned much new or different since the original Mothman Prophecies was written? Because obviously you're looking at the after effects, but have we learned much about the source of the phenomenon? Not exactly. I mean, I think that if you're saying, has there been any theories or any ideas that have explained Mothman? No, not really. People have noticed things like what I call the Mothman math which nicely uh, syncs with the number 13. You know, it was the Mothman was seen in November 15th, 1966, exactly 13 months later when LBJ turns on the White House Christmas tree lights, the bridge collapse and 46 people are killed when they fall into the, the water. And they, they actually found the cause of that bridge collapsing it was I-bar 13 in the bridge. And then Mary Heyer, 
who was John Keel's friend and the reporter that was uh, most connected. She died two times 13, 26 months later at the age of 52 of a mysterious ailment. So the number um, 13 keeps coming up over and over again. And I actually uh, write somewhat about that in the book and I've blogged about it since then. So there's all of these things that happened after the bridge collapsed, when Mothman was supposed to have disappeared, uh, including one of them. If you consider the bridge collapsed in 67, and Keel didn't write the book until 75. As I mentioned in the book, I do a whole chapter looking at Point Pleasant. Point Pleasant really forgot about Mothman until the movie came out in 2002. It took a lot of uh, pushing for Point Pleasant to really get to the stage where they became sort of the Mothman version of Roswell because they were ignoring the creature. Well, it was, it was quite a tragedy. It's not, un, uh, it's not, you know, it's quite understandable that a town would really not want to become known for such a tragedy. Uh, so no, I could see why there'd be some pushback on that. Well, a pushback on the bridge collapsed, but the bridge really wasn't connected to Mothman until Keel did that in 75. There was lots of people that, would be willing to talk about Mothman, but because of this depressive uh, mourning that they continued on, a city that was uh, up to 6,000 people started going to 4,000, 2,000. You know, the, the population dropped. The downtown became a ghost town. Then in 2002, 2003, it all turned around. They could actually celebrate Mothman as opposed to just be depressed and suicidal about the silver bridge collapsing. Right. Was that bridge ever rebuilt? It was a little bit down the way and they once again painted it silver. So some local people actually call it the silver bridge. What was it called before then? The silver bridge. You see, I looked it up since we're dealing with movie stats. Okay. Mothman prophecies released January 25th, 2002. Production budget, $32 million. A modest one. Very modest. I mean, now they can't even do a single special effect for $32 million. That's $10 million more than they spent on this UFO project, by the way. The worldwide gross was $55 million, which means this movie lost money. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember the doubler. It would have had to have grossed at least $64 million and then allow for special promotion. In other words, it would have had to have grossed maybe 75 to 80 million minimum to at least break even for the production company. Instead, it lost money, which most movies do, by the way. It's where you have these blockbuster films where they spend 300 million and then they need another 100 million to cover promotional costs. And then you end up with a movie like Justice League which so far has only grossed $647 million, which means it will probably lose somewhere between $50 and $100 million for Warner Brothers. They're going to take it out of Ben Affleck's paycheck. But one of the things with the Mothman prophecies, it became such a frequent um, replayed film on cable, you know, over and over again that it actually caused people to know what Mothman was all again. So I, I, know, I would think that even though I understand what you're saying about the theatrical release, I think there must have been money in terms of selling it to cable, selling it DVD and other, other ways, because it's a, a film that they still play frequently on TV. Well, we have, of course, DVD sales, but remember also we have Hollywood-based accounting. So it doesn't matter how much money that movie made. Maybe at the end of the day, it grossed 80, 90 million because of cable, TV rights, because of DVD, whatever, sales. Maybe it grossed 80, 90 million. I assure you, as far as the producers are concerned, it was a money loser. Sure. And they made money, though. They always do. You know, unless it loses a lot. I still think they'll make the money back from... Justice League, but what does that have to do with Mothman prophecies? But I'm looking here, you have in the back of the book a death list. Not just the people who died when the bridge collapsed, 
but people who died after it. You mentioned some names. Of course, we have to mention John Keel. You also mentioned Gray Barker. Now, Gray Barker wrote a book about the Silver Bridge. Yes, he did. He called it the Silver Bridge. It was part fiction, part uh, reality. And uh, I did not know that. Oh, yep. And um, he was very involved with the Silver Bridge and also the Mothman. Also Flatwoods Monster. He, of course, was based in West Virginia. Uh, James Mosley uh, really gave it away that he died from AIDS, that Gray Barker died from AIDS. And so he had a whole secret life, which, of course, in the 50s was very important to have. Uh, James Mosley may have shared that secret life. But, uh, well, of course, it's something that we basically mostly knew. His friends knew about that right. other life. But yes, that's why he died. But it's easy just enough to say, well, maybe it had something to do with this. But then he wrote that book in the 60s. And he died, right. what, in the 1980s? Right. So how we can make a connection, who knows? We're going to connect a lot of things here. Connecting dots or Mothman with Gene... Chris and Lauren, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Most people think life insurance pays after you're dead. That's true. But did you know you can have tax-free access to your life insurance while you're still alive? You can use the life benefits of your life insurance to grow your money with certainty and guarantees. No stock market risk, no tax risk, and no penalties. Call Life Benefits if you'd like a free book about how this can be done. Call 702-660-7000. That's 702-660-7000. Fully cooked, ready to eat bacon. I'm talking thick, meaty, center cut, presidential bacon. Savory and delicious. I buy some, I use some, I store some. Awesome. No refrigeration needed with a 10 year shelf life. NASA pack technology. Bacon. Fully cooked, fully hydrated, ready to eat right from the pack bacon or warm and served. Life saving, ready to eat bacon. 10 year shelf life bacon. Ships free at fullycookedbacon.com. Fullycookedbacon.com. Anytime, any place, anywhere, radio remains the most intimate of all forms of media. At home, at work, in the car, on smartphones. Over 90% of consumers still listen to radio every week. That makes choosing radio as a place to advertise your business one of the best decisions you can make. Email advertise at GCNlive.com and partner up with an experienced GCN representative. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. Have you checked your ECS lately? We have. We are New Pharma, scientists who specialize in human functions controlled by the endocannabinoid system, or ECS. Let me simplify. Your ECS is involved in physiological processes like appetite, pain sensation, mood, memory, and immune systems. 
New Pharma's patent pending science is the big difference in our natural solutions formulated for your well being. For example, our foundation product provides targeted nutrition to support a healthy endocannabinoid system, which is directly responsible for managing and controlling inflammation. This product contains turmeric, which is known as one of the best anti inflammatories on the planet. Our allergies product contains sage, which is a very effective decongestant. See all of our amazing capsules, essential oils, and ECS herbal tea at gnuphama.com. New Pharma, your path to wellness begins here. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com. Virtual care anywhere. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Again, we had an interesting conversation on last week's episode of After the Paracast about the Pentagon UFO investigation and whether it has any implications. We're not going to cover it again this week, but maybe we'll refer to it at a future episode of the Powercast. We'll bring some guests on who are more knowledgeable about it, and we get some observations. In the meantime, if you want to listen to After the Powercast, it comes as part of the package. It includes a commercial-free version of this show. It's called Powercast Plus. Go to plus.thepowercast.com to learn more. Plus.thepowercast.com. The book is Mothman, Evil Incarnate, the unauthorized companion to Mothman prophecy. You've got this long, long death list. We mentioned Gray Barker for obvious reasons. His death was due to obviously a condition that hopefully is not going to take too many more people. We mentioned John Keel. We mentioned other people that I know and I recognize here. I didn't think their death could possibly have anything to do with this. And that was somebody that used to write for my magazine occasionally, D. Scott Rogo. What happened to him? D. Scott Rogo was actually murdered. Another gay man who apparently got involved with someone that either was a friend that turned into an enemy, turned into a burglar. Uh, A lot of confusing things there. D. Scott Rogo was very interested in Mothman and had really talked to Jerry Clark and myself quite a bit about Mothman. Uh, He's not somebody, of course, is famous as John A. Keel, or even one of the first people that um, appears on the list right after uh, the bridge collapsed, uh, relatively speaking, is Fred Freed, who uh, was an individual that a lot of people know from the NBC white paper. He was working with Keel to do a documentary on Mothman and the Silver Bridge and the UFOs, Uh, being seen up and down the Ohio Valley. And then he very mysteriously was found uh, dead in his bed of undetermined cause, which was changed later, died suddenly of apparent heart attack. He died uh, March 31st, 1974, which, you know, in the realm of things was not too, kind of quickly after the bridge collapsed. And he's one of the people that... uh, Keel really was uh, definitely associated with, as well as Mary Hyde and Ivan T. Sanderson. Ivan T. Sanderson, of course, is the cryptozoologist, and he was sometimes interested in looking at UFOs as living creatures. And he was a Fortean, and he was the secret contact that Keel was talking to all during the Mothman incidents, because Keel was trying to check out, was there a biological basis to the Mothman reports. And Sanderson felt that it might have been some kind of unknown giant bird, but they also talked about UFOs and psychics and and other different things like that. Well, it seems 
look at the ages of people now to think back then when I knew Ivan and I knew Ivan very deeply uh, and closely. I thought, wow, he's an old man. He died of cancer and his age was 62. Well, I think about that nowadays and I think, wow, 62 is relatively young. I mean, I'm 70. So I'm not using myself as a yardstick, but it does kind of freak me out that a lot of times we look and hear about somebody dying at 50 or 60, and we think about them as old people. Uh, But that has a lot to do with the fact we are looking from, you know, 20 years old and we're saying these people were old. But um, Sanderson kind of died quickly, and that was a a big shock to a lot of people. And He was you know, the first one on the list in 73. Now, another person who died is someone well-known as an artist for comic books, sci-fi pictures, and he also did the illustration for Mothman Prophecies. Right. And you can pronounce his last name. Frank Frazetta. Right. Frank Frazetta. He was an old man. But he is kind of one of the hidden people, another hidden person behind the Mothman Prophecies. Mothman Prophecies came about as a book, of course, in 75. And then High Times came along and they did an article about it. And they used Frank's illustration for the cover. Well, along came Ron Burns who actually died very mysteriously of food poisoning at a Mexican restaurant in Atlanta. He's on the list, too. And he actually published The Mothman Prophecies in 1991, I believe it was, and used that cover, which became extremely famous and actually took over the popular image of what the Mothman looks like. It looks like an insect. It looks like, uh, you know, a giant creature with wings in which you can see butterfly-like wings. Well, that became the statue that is in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Anyway, the illustrator died. His wife died. The executive producer of the movie died. Uh, the person that was in charge of some technical part of the movie has died. The, the list just goes on and on for me that all of these people seem to have pivotal roles in the movie uh, being produced or the Mothman cases. Now, of course, I think we can always go overboard. And a lot of people have said my list goes overboard, but that's fine. You have to start somewhere. And you have to start connecting the dots and seeing uh, what it is. It's not so much me that made it, but if this feeling of death and foreboding and doom is connected to Mothman, I was trying to come up with the evidence for why people were talking about this over and over. It became more than a creature that was seen in the skies or on the road or Uh, flying about, it had a lot to do with the people and their feelings about it and the death that really seemed to surround Mothman. Well, the thing I would also do here when you look at something like this and you want to be skeptical about it, because remember, all these people didn't just die in a bunch within a few years after this event. Some lived on for years, died possibly of other conditions. Obviously, Frank Frazetta was 82 We know what Gray Barker died from, a condition that in the 80s especially really, really hurt the gay community. A really unfortunate and sad thing. And I like Gray Barker. He was really basically a good guy. I mean, he pulled a lot of funny stunts, but he was an amazingly talented writer. And I thought The Silver Bridge was really a great piece of work. You, You got into a point where you were feeling... The paranormal, it wasn't just describing events because of the fact that it was allegorical and fictional to some degree. But you also have to look at it this way. If we're going to do this, should we then take any major UFO event and see how many people were impacted by it in some way, in some connection, and how many of them died? Well, of course. Are we reaching is what I'm saying. 
Well, I don't know. As a Fordian in general, one of the mainstays of being a Fordian is to look for patterns. To look for patterns sort of in a predictive way, in a synchronistic way, in some fashion, try to figure out the universe. And you have to do it skeptically. You have to do it with a good sense of humor, but you still have to look. And if you don't look, you don't find anything. And I think there's a, lo there's a whole subset of people in ufology. It's not my field, and I want to say that very clearly, but there's a whole subset of people that look for deaths in ufology. And uh, Nick Redford, for instance, um, wrote a whole book called The Fatal, some has fatal in the title, The Fatal, um, and he looks at it that way. Uh, there's even looking at how many people in ufology have died on June 24th. So is there a cause and effect here? Is it just a coincidence? Is it the anniversary syndrome? There's something going on. Is it psychological? Is it something that humans are totally making up? Perhaps. But I don't shy away from looking for these patterns. Well, it's certainly good to do it. We want to really see the impact of this. But just making that point, we've got Lauren Coleman, Gene and Chris. You're in. The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Would it be okay if you had two paychecks instead of one? I'm Pharmacist Keith. Dr. Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy and myself, want to show you how to get an extra paycheck every month, creating an extra income that will last for years to come by joining Dr. Wallach's crusade, spreading his message of better health. To learn more, visit radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com, radio.recordedvideo.com, or call 866-257-3105 for a recorded message. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. On the Paracast, Lauren Coleman, we're talking about Mothman. And we've got Gene and Chris to ask him the hard questions. Lauren, why did it take so long to get a book like this out? Because obviously the Mothman happened in the 60s and the Mothman prophecies published in the 70s and the movie came out in the early 2000s. Well, Jerry Clark and I wrote a book called Creatures of the Outer Edge in 1975, 78. So that was uh, pretty much talks a little bit about the Mothman in there. I did 
Mothman and other curious counters in 2002 when the movie came out. It took me until now. I don't know, but a lot of things came together. Last year, I was asked to be the keynote speaker at the Mothman Festival in Point Pleasant because it was the 50th anniversary of the first sightings of Mothman. So I felt a little pressure to get this book done that I've been trying to write for 11 years uh, because this year, 2017, on December 15th, was the 50th anniversary of the Silver Bridge collapsing. So a lot of things were coming together as well as 2017 had an explosion of what people are calling Mothman sightings in Chicago. Yeah, so, I wanted to get to that at some point. Yeah, so we I needed to talk about that too. Do we still consider the original Mothman case unexplained at this point? Definitely. Uh, you know, you have a few skeptics, of course, come along and they get on TV and they say things like, well, Mothman was nothing but a barn owl or a barred owl, two real kinds of owls that were sitting in a tree. Of course, Mothman was reported to be six to seven feet tall and, uh, you know, flying at 60 to 100 miles an hour in back of cars. That doesn't explain Mothman. Everybody that I've talked to, all the eyewitnesses, I go into this very open-mindedly, but also skeptically. And so I looked at the owl explanation. I looked at all of the possible you know, people were being fooled or there were a series of different kinds of animals or different kinds of phenomena they were looking at. It all really fell by the wayside. And and it's one of those cases, I have to say, I don't know. I really don't know what was the source of Mothman. And it doesn't seem to be a case where there was lots of Mothmen. There was really only one Mothman being seen. Of course, in um uh, in that same area, you have native peoples for hundreds of years who have reported Mothman-type creatures. Mothman is an unfortunate name. It was a name that came about in 1967 when a newspaper headline a writer who was a fan of the Batman series on TV decided to be cute and name this big bird that was being reported all over Point Pleasant as a Mothman. Well, the native peoples, they had what they call the flying heads or the talking heads. I mean, it seemed like talking heads, but they were flying heads because the actual eyes of these creatures are on their uh, chest. They really don't have heads. They really have two eyes that reflect uh, light on their chest. That sounds like in, a description of Mothman. Yeah, exactly. And then in the 1920s, there were reports of these giant birds with also eyes in their chest uh, following and, and bothering jalopies. So even though everybody thinks Mothman just happened for two years in the 1960s, there's a whole history in that area of Mothman-type creatures, uh, the same descriptions being seen. Well, what do you think of these Chicago sightings? I know Lon Strickler has done quite a bit of uh, pretty good quality work, uh, at least documenting and getting witness names uh, and descriptions. Um, how, how closely have you been following this, and, and what are your thoughts on it? Well, I've been following it very closely, and I actually just did a um, a review of his book on, on CryptoZoo News because uh, I'd have to back up on your – description of, of uh, how these cases are being gathered. I think that mostly they're being gathered through websites, and maybe some people have the names, but the names are not being published. Uh, there's uh, some credibility gaps in other people not being allowed to actually interview the same witnesses. So it's become one of those classic territorial situations where right. uh, other people have investigators have been put down one of uh, Lon's friends even went on a website and said that another investigator should be slapped uh, and this is a male talking to about a female so it had some sexism and some uh, you know unfortunateness in there 
So I'm very disturbed by the, I think Lon, I'm glad he wrote the book. I'm glad the cases are out there. But in my review of his book, for instance, I was not easy. The book is terribly produced as a self-published book. No index, no organization, no chapters, no table of contents. One case from the you know, 80s mixed in with cases from 2017. Long passages of eyewitness descriptions with no analyses. So we've got a lot of raw data that needs some organization, needs names, needs other people to interview the same witnesses. And there's a lot of uh, checking. For instance, no newspaper articles have come out with original sightings. Uh, There's only the Chicago Tribune and another organization who did articles based upon that group's investigations, but there's no double checking back to the witnesses. There's no identifying the witnesses. I personally, in all of my investigations, people identify themselves. I write down people's names in my books. People have to be able to be willing to somewhat stand forward and really have some kind of checking there. No police reports in any of the Chicago reports. Uh, One of the criticisms that I've really thrown at the Chicago sightings, if there's now over 60 sightings, maybe 70, where are the closed circuit TV? I mean, this is an urban area. You can't turn around in Chicago without at your ATM or your corner or your I've seen a couple of of photographs, but they, they haven't been very convincing. No, no. The one photograph that is kind of widely shown around looks like an airplane landing at O'Hare. But where are the videos? That's what I'm calling for. Where are the videos in an urban area in which you have so many? Why isn't the law enforcement people being involved? Why are they kind of, I mean, we, we know about law enforcement people and we knew about news people, mainstream news people ridicule things. The other thing that bothers me about the Chicago sightings, honestly, is with Mothman in West Virginia, there was a consistency in form. There was a consistency in appearance. In Chicago, you have reports that sound like kites, uh, airplanes, balloons, smoke. You have some birds, owls, all being labeled as Mothman. So people have said that I've said that Mothman in Chicago is nothing but mass hysteria. I've never said that, but I certainly think that the use of the word Mothman in Chicago has taken on many other kinds of creatures within that realm. So it doesn't sound like you're that impressed with uh, the work that's been done up there. I know initially Lon uh, did have names. He did have, it seemed like uh, more quality uh, was and care was taken with the reports. I think later on they may have, that quality may have faded out somewhat, but initially... I remember he was definitely the guy that was was uh, making an attempt to at least document everything. Um, oh, I'm so. not saying I'm not saying anything about his ability to document it, but maybe one or two names slipped out in the beginning, but then it became this this is my stuff, I'm not going to share it with anybody. Yeah, well He's that's up- unfortunate. We don't have time for that. Yeah. Yeah, and with a couple of the women investigators, it's been brutal. You know what? We're going to have to do a break now. And once the broken break is fixed, we can get back here with Lauren, Gene, and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Neighbors, we've made such a deal with HelloFresh. And it means that everyone listening to this show can receive $30 off your first week of deliveries When you go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code PARACAST30, you know, with HelloFresh, you can choose the delivery day that works best for you. They've got a wide variety of chef-curated recipes that change weekly. And can you imagine me cooking Japanese panko chicken? It makes me feel like I'm a chef. It means also that you could actually... Get your meal cooked in 30 minutes. For busy people, this is perfect. The simple recipes include step-by-step instructions so even I can figure it out. Go to HelloFresh.com. Use the offer code PARACAST30 to get $30 off your first week of deliveries 
HelloFresh.com. So are you tired of being tired? Well, then it's time to get the tea. Hey, it's Lisa here to tell you about this all-natural, all-organic tea I've been drinking that has had great results for over 20 years. It's called Life Change Tea, and it's specially formulated to help detoxify and cleanse your kidneys, liver, colon, and blood all at once. The colon is one of the most ignored organs in the human body. The faster that waste is eliminated from the body, the less time that waste sits in our intestines, spreading toxins to our bloodstream. This tea helps cleanse chemicals caused by outside intruders from our entire digestive system. And get this, weight loss can be a side effect. And with continued use of the tea, you can experience clear, healthier, younger looking skin, increased energy, and a happier outlook on life. So if you're tired of being tired, get the life change tea at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. And like me, you'll be glad you did. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original and most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. People search the internet for everything, including you. With a few clicks, information from your past can be quickly discovered. From business deals gone wrong, to misleading reviews, negative articles, and unflattering images. Studies show 78% of people search for someone online before doing business with them. Will they find the real you? With ReputationDefender.com, you can establish a positive internet presence. ReputationDefender.com pioneered the field with over a decade of experience, serving thousands of successful individuals and businesses. We use patented, award-winning systems to boost positive content and suppress negative material. Don't let the internet define you. Take control of your reputation today with ReputationDefender.com. For your quick, free reputation analysis, call 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771, 800-831-0771, or visit reputationdefender.com. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Chris is losing his Mothman voice. You surprised me, Gene. I wasn't ready. I know. I'm happy to surprise people. That's what the thrill of the show is oh by the way i'm not the only one people just sometimes dislike here i actually got a letter from somebody who was a long time subscriber to paracast plus and he stopped listening because of you because of me no chris oh (laughs) he'll maybe he hates you too i don't know why what did i do this time i don't know i guess he thinks you're being a little too shall we say direct What's that supposed to mean? Well, okay, he says, religion bashing with no equal time for the faithful to defend their position. I'm not aware that we discuss religion all that much, except in the sense of things like Native American religions and legends of star people and stuff like that, or ancient astronauts. Politics, always left-leading, nonsensical drivel, with absolutely no equal time for alternative viewpoints. Well, how about that dark journalist gentleman? He was certainly conservative. I don't think Uh, we... And I think I gave him a lot more rope than I thought he deserved because he was saying things that were utter nonsense. You see, here's the point. I'll defend Chris. He doesn't have to defend himself. This is the Paracast. We present unvarnished opinions. We're not politically correct. We do not say something because somebody likes it. It's 
what we want to say. Now, in terms of left-leaning or right-leaning politics, we have guests who are on both sides of the fence. Don Ecker is certainly a conservative, politically. And he comes on the show every so often and catches up. The key here is not whether it's left or right, but factual. All right? Facts do not have a religion or a political persuasion. Let's get back to Mothman. Chris, you want to continue to talk with Lauren about the subject? Yeah, of course. Um, it is one of, I think, the more compelling cases uh, from a just an attendant phenomenon uh, perspective. And that's one thing about the Keel book that always struck me as being uh, probably the most uh, unusual aspect of the thing, besides the actual sightings of the of the so-called uh, phenomenon. But it's all the attendant stuff and, and, and Keel's ability to keep track of a lot of stuff going on in the community, um, stuff that was uh, attendant to you know what was going on in west west virginia but also in his own personal life and that's kind of where where um you know i felt that sometimes investigators when they do start to get involved in their own investigations they become part of the story it gets gonzo it's it's really important for them to um i think re retain their their objectivity and uh and really try to try to escape that feeling that <laughs> all of a sudden that they're they're uh, target of the creatures or target of the voices or target that they, they, you know they, they've gained the attention of something um because that's when when the paranoia starts and that's when it can get a little dicey to to try to wade through what's real and what's not real where do you come down on keel and his creative writing uh, for instance lauren how, how much can we take everything that that is reported in there as gospel or how much uh Lord, creative liberties do you think he took First of all, I have to start out by complimenting Keel. I think that he is the one writer in modern Fordian literature that tried to do what Truman Capote did in Cold Blood. The Mothman Prophecies is the Fordian American novel that's nonfiction. Uh, and I think Keel was an extremely good writer. And really, it was a pleasant experience to read Keel. And a lot of people have mentioned that. They'll, they've mentioned that Keel will be known forever because he was such a wordsmith. And he did such a smooth job of putting together different facets of the Point Pleasant Mothman UFO story. I think that he got some things wrong, but we all do. And in fact, uh, one of the things in my new book is the very long Mothman, uh, you know, kind of check on him with Mike Winkle's uh, annotations. Uh, I really wanted somebody to get involved in this book with me that really looked in a compulsive way at every line in the Mothman prophecies. And I think you've seen some people like uh, Mr. X, I don't know if you know him, who did that with Charles Fort, going through his books and looking at every little thing uh, about that. I'm very happy uh, to say that I don't think that Keel made that many mistakes. He, he sometimes, uh, there are some people that are quoted in there that I think are, uh, they exaggerated their stories to Keel because Keel, Keel became a magnet. He became a magnet uh, to individuals when he really came into the town they wanted to tell him every story that happened to them you know cattle mutilations ufos bigfoot uh, men in black all of those because keel listened keel listened and he didn't make judgments the one thing that i do um, know that happened and i think i'm really aware of that i try to make clear and both my former book and this book, is that Keel looked through everything, not as a Fordian towards the end, not as a ufologist, but in his own self-described way, he said, I am a demonologist. He really thought the world was full of demons. A lot of bad things were going to happen. A lot of bad things were going to be predicted through his psychic friends. And for instance, when I went to interview uh, Linda 
Scarberry, who used to be Linda uh, Daniel, who died, at, you know, with another name because she was so scared of what was going on. She said that when John Keel came to her house and interviewed her, after Keel left, she was so frightened, so scared, so, you know, in fear of what was going to happen with regard to she was an eyewitness to Mothman that she put crucifixes on every wall in her house. A couple years later, she had a what back then, of course, was called a nervous breakdown. She went to a mental hospital for several months because of the whole Mothman situation. But also, I think, in many ways, because of the way Keel interviewed her and frightened her to death. And Keel left in his wake, and I think it was kind of his irony that whenever he was invited back to the Mothman festivals after the movie, he would always wear a white um, suit. And that was his way of saying, you know, in your face, men in black. Uh, but also it was a kind of, he was trying to flip the whole story that he was really a very dark man. No. Well, you know, John Keel had this amazing sense of humor too. And he used to write letters to the editor, to my magazine, Caveat Tour. And they were just amazingly hilarious. We, I mean, it was like he was attacking us, but not. It was a lot of fun. We've got more to come. The book is called Mothman Evil Incarnate. Lauren Coleman, Gene Steinberg, Chris O'Brien, you're in The Paracast. <laughs> listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Frustrated trying to get business capital? Want to take the slow process and rejection out of the equation? GCNloans.com removes the slow, irritating approval process. Instead, get quick, simple funding. Powered by David Allen Capital, 80% of our pre-qualified clients are approved in days. Pre-qualify at GCNloans.com and get your money this week. It's that easy. GCNloans.com. That's GCNloans.com. Sometimes life can be a pain in the neck or back or shoulder. Long distance travel or long hours in front of a computer can take its toll on your body. Why take another pill? Treat your aches and pains with sunshine pillows, microwavable heat wraps, heatable neck pillows, and extra large body heating wraps. Sunshine pillows and wraps are designed better for perfect support where and when you need it, even while driving. Sunshine pillows are designed with your comfort in mind, will not burn you, and will stay balanced on your body to provide soothing hot or cold therapy to treat temporary or chronic pain. And the best part, Sunshine pillows start at just $20. Join hundreds of our happy customers and see why Sunshine pillows has a lifetime 100% positive rating on both Amazon and Etsy. Click sunshine-pillows.com and take the Sunshine Pillow Challenge. That's sunshine-pillows.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. 
Visit the Berkey Guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey Guy. Are you happy washing your hands with harsh chemicals? Are you happy doing laundry with detergents? Are you happy paying high prices? Find your happiness with Pure Soap. These all-natural, earth-friendly Pure Soaps are the very best you've ever used. Buy in bulk. Get a 12, 36, or 48-month supply. Or get items individually and still save big. You're getting soap products twice as good as what you're using now. Earth-friendly and natural soaps. Your family deserves the best. Happiness is 5starsoap.com. Why not put your money up the drain for a change? See them at 5starsoap.com or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Cal Bend Soap Company can save you thousands of dollars and give you good old-fashioned real soaps that are triple concentrated. Soaps made from vegetable and coconut oils. See their full selection of soaps at 5starsoap.com. That's F-I-V-E starsoap.com. Or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. This is Jacques Vallée. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Now, I don't know if you recall this because it happened, what, eight years ago. But you, Lauren Coleman, Jerry Clark, Tim Beckley, Jim Mosley, Brad Steiger, and Kurt Southerly, old friend of mine, I'm sure you know Kurt. We did a memorial episode about John Keel. This was July 12, 2009. And one of the references made by several guests, and I think Jerry Clark was one of those people, was that Keel was not as rigorous a UFO investigator as he might have been. What do you think? Well, Jerry has very high standards, as you know. So none of us will meet his standards except perhaps no, none you. Of us will, none of us will meet Jerry Clark's standards. And also towards the end, he really didn't like Keel. I mean, I just have to say that out. I agree with you. I think Keel had a tremendous sense of humor. Some of the letters I have from him from the 60s and 70s just would have me rolling, you know, on my parents' floor, so to speak. But then what happened with Keel is he did get, he almost believed his own irony and his own crustiness. And I think with UFO people, uh, with UFO incidents, Keel would be very lackadaisical. He'd be very, he'd, that's why he threw in all the psychic stuff and all, almost anything else, whereas Jerry Clark would only say, you know, this very rigidly needs to be investigated this way or that. So I have to agree with Jerry, but I, I think I'd look through the glasses of the person making the critique. What do you think, John Keel is a researcher? Do you think most of the key cases he talked about, he got right? I mean, obviously, he had a lot of these paranoic aspects to UFOs, the doppelgangers, the crazy phone calls. And of course, sometimes I wondered when he'd ever talk about crazy phone calls, that was Jim Mosley and Gray Barker pulling a stunt. But It, it could be. I, I think the other thing that happened is Kia was a very good researcher. He wrote things down. He kept clippings. He, you know, he did all kinds of very good Fortean filing, ufologist kind of things. But because of the movie, I mean, first you have to have the screen of the uh, Mothman Prophecies, the book, which made the story more palatable to readers. It made it like a novel. Then you come along and you have the movie, which is highly fictionalized. So a lot of people now blame Keel for that movie that had, you know, Richard Gere as one part of his personality and Alan Bates is another part of Keel's personality being contemporary, not even happening in the 60s, and throwing in awful, awful stories like Mothman was seen at Chernobyl before Chernobyl happened. And Keel and I actually in tandem uh, on the few interviews that he would do would say, you know, there's garbage in the movie, there's garbage, there's trash, that didn't happen, that happened. So we had to spend 
as much time telling about the real incidents of 1966-67, talking about those, but also denying all of the false stuff that was put in the movie. Like Mark Pellington, the director, changed the number of people killed on the bridge from the bridge clap from 46 to 36. And he told USA Today, well, I thought that uh, any number over 40 was too much. And besides, 36 was the number of my father's football jersey in high school. I mean, it's just incredible what Keel had to deal with at the end. Well, you see, this is also part of any time you sell a story, even a factual book, to Hollywood. They're going to do stuff. They reserve the right to do stuff. I mean, the biggest joke and the legendary example of this is back in the 50s when they bought one of Major Donald Kehoe's UFO books and it became ultimately Earth versus the Flying Saucers. And maybe there was a 30-second introduction about UFO sightings to that film that related to something in Kehoe's book. Right. And he was embarrassed beyond belief, I gather, from reading his follow-up books at the time, where he sort of expected they were going to do a documentary or something. I guess his agent didn't communicate very well with Hollywood. But when it comes to buying a property, they can literally take the title and maybe even change that and use practically nothing from the book in crafting a new script. Oh, absolutely. It's just Keel didn't know that, and he was upset. I mean, as things go, it was a sci-fi movie, right. period, or a horror film. I think they call it horror film at the yeah, movie Yeah, psychological database. thriller. Psychological thriller. Yeah. And they don't care. As far as they're concerned, they use it as a stepping point. So a composite character named Klein, played by Richard Gere, is, I guess, the John Keel composite. The character, but I mean, John Keel, Richard Gere. <laughs> he he always uh, he always liked that they picked Keel. I mean, um, Richard Gere to be Keel. He thought, but then everybody in the movie knew that uh, the other character, Alan Bates, played Leek, which is Keel backwards, looked more like Keel. So that was the end joke in the movie. Well. Look, he got, what, $80,000 for this? That's not bad. I mean, there are people who sell stuff to movie companies and they're lucky to get five grand. When we had the author of the biography of Dr. J. Allen Hynek on the Paracast some months back, he revealed that in connection with Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Steven Spielberg and his production people never reached out to Hynek at all. And when Heineck learned what was going on, he contacted them and they threw him a bone. They made him a technical advisor. They gave him this famous cameo, which I thought was actually quite significant at the latter part of the film when the spaceship had landed. And they gave him $3,500. I know, that's awful. I know. Well, I have my own stories about, I have a, one of my books is under movie option. Uh, it has been for 13 years, and uh, this all started almost 15 years ago when uh, Nicolas Cage told Variety mags in you know, a Variety newspaper that they had the option for the Tom Slick books. They never had the option for the books. They never signed anything with me. I finally tracked down one of the script writers who was the same guy who did Mars Attacks. And he said, oh, yeah, uh, they're showing us Xerox copies of the book around the production company. Well, I got some people to get hold of them, and they dropped that because they never had my option of my book. And, uh, you know, now then another director came to me and signed a real option to the book, but they've never produced it because there's a lot of books that are in development hell. And Keel's book was in development hell for a long time, and he didn't get his money until actually a studio signed onto the movie. So uh, at least he got that. Who knows where that money went? Who knows 
uh, you know, how many debts he was able to finally. He told people at the end of his life that his he didn't want to get out of the nursing home because his car had four flat tires and he was owed money on his apartment. So he didn't want to leave the nursing home, but they forced him out anyway. And he went back to his apartment and was helped by certain people. Then he went back to the nursing home and died. So uh, that's the way it is sometimes. So much Hollywood. I mean, I wrote a couple of novels with my son's sci-fi novels, and I had a lawyer and an agent with the proper Writers Guild connections. And they didn't do anything. And you never know, 10 years from now, I'll be long dead and they'll be interested. This way they don't have to pay my estate because there won't be an estate at that particular point, you see. They give them plenty of time. But that's Hollywood for you, right? Anyway, Lauren Coleman, Gene Steinberg, Chris O'Brien, you're in. The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. Most people think life insurance pays after you're dead. That's true. But did you know you can have tax-free access to your life insurance while you're still alive? You can use the life benefits of your life insurance to grow your money with certainty and guarantees. No stock market risk, no tax risk, and no penalties. Call Life Benefits if you'd like a free book about how this can be done. Call 702-660-7000. That's 702-660-7000. Ted Anderson telling you about Jordan Rubin's Beyond Organic Green-Fed Raw Cheddar Artesian Cheese featuring whole milk created through ancient dairy breeding, unpasteurized, untreated whole milk on the same farm the cows graze, containing natural sources of omega-3s, CLA protein, calcium, probiotics, and enzymes. I have never tasted cheese this good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. 
Fully cooked, ready-to-eat bacon. I'm talking thick, meaty, center-cut, presidential bacon. Savory and delicious. I buy some, I use some, I store some. Awesome. No refrigeration needed with a 10-year shelf life. NASA pack technology. Bacon. Fully cooked, fully hydrated, ready-to-eat right from the pack bacon. Or warm and served. Life-saving, ready-to-eat bacon. 10-year shelf life bacon. Ships free at FullyCookedBacon.com. FullyCookedBacon.com. Hello, this is John Burroughs, one of the witnesses to the Rendlesham UFO incident. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Lauren has the touch. See, when they talk about me, they say he's touched, but Lauren has the touch. What did you discover in looking over this case in connection with this book did you discover anything that changes what we first felt that wasn't true about our original perceptions of mothman well one thing that i really tried to put out as a message is that with time the mothman case has got and more evil but also has grown ahead and i mean that literally in re-interviewing witnesses down through the years, some of the people actually started changing what they said they saw based upon what other people and other documentaries had said they saw. So Moth Band, which was nothing more than kind of a blobby, large bird with no feet, no hands, and no head, if you'll look at some of the recreations of Moth Band nowadays, They have hands, they have feet, and Mothman has a head. None of those was seen by the original eyewitnesses. And so in many ways, it's a very good case study in eyewitness perception and eyewitness sort of corruption because uh, it has become a very famous media case. A lot of shows love it. Uh, You know, there's some bad, bad movies that, uh, besides the Mothman prophecies that have been made about Mothman on Sci-Fi Channel and others. There's some really horrible documentaries and reality TV programs on Mothman. And most of those do things like, you know, have investigators dive into the river with no clothes. I mean, just with swimsuits on and different things like that, stupidly. And uh, yet you have people like Seth Breedlove, a new guy on the scene, a documentary filmmaker that did a whole brand new documentary called The Moth Man of Point Pleasant, in which he goes back and he finds original witnesses. He really, in many ways, does some good editing of those eyewitness accounts so that they don't just kind of feed what wants to be what the um, documentary filmmaker might want to hear you know that they think in their own mind mothman doesn't have hands mothman doesn't have heads and so documentary filmmakers like uh seth breedlove who's doing that kind of uh documentary where he's trying to get back to the original is the kind that people should be watching so after all these years we cannot find any conventional explanation for this No, as far as I'm concerned, Mothman is still unknown. There's not any, if you want to believe the debunkers and believe the the skeptics with the big S, it was nothing more than a mass hysteria caused by giant birds. Well, there was one owl that was killed and the report still occurred, Uh, one snowy owl. But there was nothing to do with any kind of explanation There was over 200 witnesses of Mothman, uh, and they basically all agreed that it was a large bird-like creature, six to seven feet tall. Uh, The eyes did not glow red. They actually only produced the red color whenever headlights or streetlights or flashlights was pointed in their direction. So that's part of the myth-making that occurred afterwards is this creature had red eyes. It only had red reflective eyes. So, uh, But nobody knows what it was. Nobody has really seen anything. There's been other reports of Mothman in that general area. There's not been a concentration 
of what we call flap or siding cluster. Uh, and that's why uh, originally it was exciting to think about, was there something else like this going on in Chicago? It turns out, no. What about before the Mothman was seen? Do we have a Mothman in earlier history of paranormal events? Well, here's where it gets confusing because actually Mothman, because it's a new word from 1966, 67, you have to look backwards in time and at records at other words that were used like Thunderbird, like giant birds, like big bird, or even um, reports of creatures that seem to mimic large birds or other things. Like, for instance, some of the Bigfoot reports seem to be Mothman-like if you look at how Mothman and some Bigfoot tend to use camouflage near trees and disappear. And so actually a friend of mine, the late Mark A. Hall, who wrote a book called um, Thunderbirds, he did a whole chapter in that book called Big Hoot, big H-O-O-T, big hoot, because he felt this was the more proper name for Mothman. He thought it was a big owl, a big owl that actually stood upwards of five to seven feet tall and then could mask itself in forests and up against trees and then would reveal itself. And he felt that some people were mistakenly seeing these on the ground big owls and calling them Bigfoot. So it gets very confusing, but if you look back, and Mark is the one that did the original research, finding the reports in Pennsylvania and other locations from the 20s, as well as the Native American reports. Um, Myself, looking at some of the Thunderbird reports and Winged Weirdy reports from all across the country, you can see reflections of Mothman-like creatures There's even the reports in Washington state of what was called bat squatch. And bat squatch was a huge creature that had wings uh, that was reported in the same area as Bigfoot or Sasquatch. So people thought it was some way related to Sasquatch, when in fact it's just some kind of winged weirdy, one, a kind of a Fortean phenomena as far as uh, we know, like Mothman. So we could therefore have a song called Bat Squatch using the melody from the Batman theme of the 1960s. Uh, You could do anything you want, apparently, Gene, (laughs) with that. Yes, yes. I mean, there is, the whole confusion here is, is the names. I mean, I think as long as you have people coming along and giving names to things, then, then people kind of, have these projections from the name that have nothing to do with original reports. But if we could get rid of all of the names, Bat Squatch and Thunderbird and Big Hoot and Mothman, we wouldn't be able to talk about them, but we might have more of the real data that all connects. Well, of course, sometimes then using the words flying saucer or UFO conveys an image of what people are seeing that may be colored by the term? What about ghosts and what about Bigfoot? Right. Bigfoot has an image of, you know, ghost ships from Scandinavia or flying saucers from Kentucky or little green men. Those all do give images that really already set up the eyewitness trying to talk about it with English language uh, that really gives them no flexibility. Uh, even the, and that's mostly caused by the media then. Well, I guess it also makes it more difficult for investigators to see what's going on because you want to report the core phenomenon, whatever it is, without the label. What was seen? And certainly people who witness these things are going to try to find a convenient explanation to describe the unknown. So separating the cultural interpretation from the actual event is obviously difficult. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why skeptics or debunkers 
can roll right up and say, well, Flatwoods, Monster, Mothman, these are nothing but owls because they fit the description that uh, I'm putting together from some of these really strange descriptions. I want to talk briefly about the Flatwoods Monster because, as you might expect, as soon as I first heard about Mothman, I'm that old, I thought, well, what about the Flatwoods Monster? Was that something in any way related? But then again, you'd have to separate the perception of whatever was seen from the actual event. And maybe we'll try that. Flatwoods Monster, do you people remember that? We did have an episode or two about that on the Powercast in the early years. But this book is about Mothman, Mothman Evil Incarnate. Lauren Coleman, Gene Steinberg, Chris O'Brien, you're in the Powercast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.thepowercast.com, store.thepowercast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children. Stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.thepowercast.com. Stop by and take a shopping tour. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNTeam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So therefore, the Flatwoods Monster, Flatwoods, West Virginia. Boy, why does everything happen in West Virginia? Any relationship, connection, similarity, what? Well, I think there is a little bit of connection. Of course, it is the Appalachia area. West Virginia, you have people that are really kind of unsophisticated. The thing that sets apart the Flatwoods Monster course is that it does seem to have a UFO or a rocket or something in the sky over the hill that appeared before the Flatwoods monster was actually seen. And as I document in my earlier book, Mothman and Other Curious Encounters, the Flatwood monster incident is not alone in its occurrence. During that time period, we had several Flatwoods monsters being seen. It almost as if there was an invasion uh, from UFOs, so to speak, and then big monstrous creatures being seen. The classic Flatwood monster course stood 
very tall, you know, seven feet tall. And it had a huge ace of spades head that had eyes that came through it that seemed to have some light source behind it. Uh, there were also some very strange things occurred with the dog. This group of people that went up the hill to see the Flatwoods monster all raced down it, and the dog that was with them raced down it, jumped over a, a fence or, or went under the fence, and then got ill, you know, started vomiting and things. And I think some of the people actually didn't feel too well either. You didn't have any of those kinds of experiences with Mothman. People didn't get sick. They didn't uh, vomit or anything like that. And so the Flatwoods monster really uh, had that kind of more physical ramifications. It kind of reminds me of some of the UFO stories that I have read. Now, one time Jim Mosley told me something really strange and maybe it was one of those times when he had more of his VAT 69 whiskey than he normally did, or more of his smoking substances. And he said when we went up there, I assume a lot of the witnesses were kids, right? As I recall. This is, you know, many years ago. One mother and all kids. All right. That they observed, I don't know, a parent, two people getting it on. And that was the original source you know, like two people cheating on their families. And that was colored as some kind of monster. That was Jim's interpretation. I guess he got it from Gray Barker. Never heard that. I never heard it since. He mentioned it one time, and I thought maybe it's just a sick humor with well, ascendance. you know, both of those individuals did a look at the world sexually in a way that a lot of us didn't approach a lot of these cases. So... Could be. I don't know. Jim made a big thing about sex and saucers where flying saucers somehow represent a substitute for some kind of sexual activity. Of course, then there's also the possibility here that some people claiming to have been raped by E.T. having some kind of sexual encounter with an extraterrestrial were actually sexually attacked or right but by a human being. And the psychological impact, either they were unwilling to say that or interpreted in such a way that it became E.T. I really don't know where you're going because I remember some of these overnight shows that I've been on in which people ask me, does Bigfoot do anal probes? I don't want to go. I don't think that we need to get that far. No. (laughs) Unless there was a theory here that Chris mentioned, of course, that maybe some Bigfoot Types were after human females, right, Chris? Uh, yeah, uh, possibly. Actually, it's the reverse. Uh, in my book, Bigfoot, The True Story of Apes in America, I did a statistical study of all of those stories about Bigfoot kidnappings. The majority of them are males. They're trying to uh, kidnap males because there aren't that many male Bigfoot around anymore, and they're trying to take them back to the family group to breed with a female Bigfoot. Well, like an Albert Osman type scenario. Exactly. Then we went there. Okay. Yeah, well, I, you know, again, it's Gene's dirty mind. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're the first person who mentioned this, Chris. I didn't bring it up. Hey, you just brought it up. I, I wasn't going to go there. But you've already been there. <laughs> Does all of your shows go this direction, guys? Well, you know, he's not called the Woody Monster. He's called the uh, Flatwoods Monster. Uh, uh, or the Bigfoot. And yeah. anybody that has big feet, never mind. <laughs> I don't know. See what, what, you've, uh, what can of worms you've opened up there, Gene? You see the real thing here, to be very serious you about know- it. You know, I wrote a chapter in my Bigfoot book that was called Sex and the Single Sasquatch. I got in so much trouble for that because, you know, there's a lot of what I was really asking people in all of these fields is that they avoid this talk of the sexuality of these creatures because we're all prudes. And as investigators, we have to be open to listening to the eyewitnesses tell us everything. And so, you know, whether it's aliens with sex, 
Bigfoot, Mothman, I don't know. Uh, but we have well, to be open to this. And not yes. So, so when he started doing that, Mrs. Jones, how did that make you feel? Well, it's really more the investigators that shy away from this. They hear people describing a Bigfoot penis looking like a horse penis, and they say, oh, thank you very much. I won't write that down. <laughs> and we're not going to continue that because this is family radio. We can use that <laughs> word, but we have to be very careful in its implications. We're not going to get into that. Well, Obviously, that's, that's not happening that's, with, with Thunderbirds. You know, we, you don't have, them? we don't have that's Thunderbirds or problem. Mothman capturing earth women oh now we're going back to gene being interested in mothman i see what can, can we use the word turgid <laughs> no the the one thing that may hook up for you about this is that most of the mothman cases started out in lovers lanes yeah because the very good point the, the orgone energy may you know the activity the energy the sexuality uh, the four people in the original car. Right, they were all making were, out. They were all. They were two couples. They were both married couples in their twenties, who actually were going to look at Lovers Lane to see if they could bother other, bother teenagers. Now, the one thing that I found, and I wrote about this in in one of the captions and one of the pictures in my new book. If you look carefully at that original picture of the four eyewitnesses there's another individual in the background it's the cousin of one of the individuals that everybody has avoided interviewing and nobody's ever talked to and i think that's there was actually five people in the car not four people and they were on a mission of you know sexual mischief so to speak mm -hmm. Well, you know, there is uh, something to um, what you're saying. I I recall the DuPont monster, for instance, in Illinois shows up at uh, Lover's Lanes. Uh, there's, uh, I think, what wasn't Momo, some of the early Momo sightings in uh, outside of Ellsbury, Missouri. I think they were also Lover Lover's Lane sightings. Uh, we have a, a, a whole sl flurry of reports here in Arizona back in 2007, I think, or 2005, where uh, Fort Apache Reservation uh, officials were getting calls of Peeping Tom Bigfoot, who was watching people getting it on in their bedrooms, which actually led to a sighting by one of the uh, teams of officers uh, replying to a 911 call. They just happened to be just within yards of the driveway. So that that that's the point that I've I've often felt that there is something to that, that there is some possibly chemical, hormonal attraction uh, with humans having sex. I think we should start moving away from that. You're in the Paracast. Attack of the Rockoids has been well-received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, 
years, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-765-9681 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-765-9681. Again, that's 800-765-9681. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. People search the internet for everything, including you. With a few clicks, information from your past can be quickly discovered. From business deals gone wrong, to misleading reviews, negative articles, and unflattering images. Studies show 78% of people search for someone online before doing business with them. Will they find the real you? With ReputationDefender.com, you can establish a positive internet presence. ReputationDefender.com pioneered the field with over a decade of experience, serving thousands of successful individuals and businesses. We use patented, award-winning systems to boost positive content and suppress negative material. Don't let the internet define you. Take control of your reputation today with ReputationDefender.com. For your quick, free reputation analysis, call 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771, 800-831-0771, or visit reputationdefender.com. Has your body ever gone low blood sugar feeling weak, shaky, knowing you better eat something fast? We all know high blood sugar can lead to many metabolic problems. At GCNteam.com, we have a healthy blood sugar pack, focusing on the structure and function of stable blood sugar. Find us at GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Nothing feels worse than unstable blood sugar. Call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. And you see, folks, it's not something I just happen to raise or explore. Well, there's also John Keel did a whole segment on the grinning men. The grinning men would be tall creatures or entities that would look over the tops of the windows into, you know, become a peeping Tom. And then remember Jim Brandon, Weird America and all of those books? Oh, yeah. He actually felt that trailers were a magnetic spot for all of these creatures because the different layers of insulation and metal was like a organ producer, you know, William Reich, that there was actually this sexual energy being caught up in trailers was sending out certain waves to, uh, you know, Bigfoot or Grinning Man or Mothman or whatever, and that they were major attractions. So, Yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying from all your cases. All right. Now, this is an interesting question here. Is there evidence then, except in certain instances, that that kind of energy may cause these weird things to happen? Do UFOs hang around lover's lanes at all? Yes. Yes, they do. And even more so, if you look at some of the the books about Wilhelm Reich's facility up in Rangeley, Maine. There were a lot of UFOs photographed overhead uh, in the Orgonium. He actually produced cloud busters and wrote books about the UFOs that were attracted to this energy. Well, as I said, again, anytime you get into something such as hybrid aliens involved with abductions, you're into this full square. Right. And uh, 
who knows where that goes. I don't think there's any alien Bigfoot hybrids, though. And a lot of people in the Bigfoot field have been really upset by a lot of the earlier DNA studies where uh, they were kind of cut short by somebody saying that Bigfoot were part angels that came down and bred with human beings. So it seems like it was just another version of your alien hybrids. The Nephilim. Oh, yeah. If there could possibly be a human Bigfoot hybrid, wouldn't they have to be very closely related genetically? Well, hybrids would be, but most hybrids are sterile. I mean, like mules and stuff. But uh, then again, we're looking at Neanderthal and some of the other things that are coming about in anthropology and paleontology. We're actually saying that maybe the inbreeding led to new new species. I don't know. At least we're not talking about Snippy, right? No, no about Snippy. Someone wrote to Chris this week about a Snippy update, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, somebody has a bright idea of taking an altimeter um, a pressure fuse. In other words, when if the cow's taken up in the air, strap a 2,000-pound bomb to it and have a fuse that's uh, that goes off uh, if it's – if the, the, the pressure, the air pressure changes, like going up in the air. And I, I didn't think that that was uh, too practical. Um, Other than possibly being illegal. Well, you know, just I've a bunch of cows walking around with 2,000-pound bombs. It, it just didn't seem very practical. You know, Chris was one of the first people that mentioned Jerry Clark and I in a book. And when you're 20 years old and you write your first or second book, and you don't know that you're going to, you know, live this long and write 40 books. I will always remember that time I first saw my name in some other 40s book. And it, it's and it was my book, really? The yeah, Mysterious the, Valley, probably. Yeah, Mysterious Valley. And, which, I, uh, which I didn't even know about your book until a couple of years later when I got accused of stealing the name from a Mysterious America. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my book didn't come out until 83. When did Mysterious Valley come out? 96. Oh, yeah. Okay. You stole the name. No, I'm just kidding. But I think you mentioned some of our earlier books in there. I did, yeah. And it was very, very special because, uh, you know, you, you try very hard in this field to be friendly with everyone. and to, And, of course, the more that you write, the more enemies you make. And now with the internet, <laughs> there's so many trolls, no. there's so many people saying I've stole things from them. So to even like read John Keel, I knew who he was talking about because I gave him one third of his book for Creatures of the uh, Strange and Strange Time and Time, and yeah. he kind of always always forgot that I'd given him all those chapters. And yet it comes around. It's just getting very confusing. Ivan Sanders and I, in 1965, once had a conversation. And he told me there was only five people in the country that were interested in Bigfoot. And nowadays, it's just an explosion of people interested in Mothman, Bigfoot, UFOs, everything. And who could have imagined, you know, back in the 60s, that anybody would care about anything we were interested in in writing? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I remember thinking I was the only one for a lot of years. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it's kind of nice. The Internet does have its downsides, but also has an instant connection to to people that's uh, very reinforcing and humbling. Yeah. yeah, good point. Well, I mentioned Jerry Clark in my last book, but he's probably not going to be too happy about it. <laughs> uh, I Jerry and I are still friends and still correspondents, and I... I still like him a lot, and I still yeah. know what buttons I can push on him to get him going. Well, I, I took his whole his whole comment that the Alexander Hamilton uh, calf abduction case in 1897 was was the result of a liars club contest, and uh, I totally debunked him on that. I found all his original articles and uh, totally blew blew his his <laughs> assertions out of the water. Well, I always wondered when that came out, because, of course, with a lot of sea serpent and Bigfoot stories, 
you can always find somebody in another newspaper that will say this is a lie or this is made up. Uh, the whole Jocko, the case of the right, British, the, the, the the British Columbia Railroad, right. Who one person said that was a a newspaper hoax, and yet you can find other people saying, well, maybe there was something to it, and this one paper was just trying to decrease the circulation of the other one by saying it was a hoax, and that happened a lot back in the old days. Yeah, of that kind of journalism. Well, I was talking about Jerry quoting an article where where Hamilton supposedly admitted that it was a lie and blah blah blah, and I found that article and he does nothing of the kind. Uh, and that was the big that was the big uh, uh, that was the article that he was basing a lot of his uh, his conclusions on. And I've I found the actual original copy of the article, a micro of a Michael Fish uh, article and uh it didn't say anything of the kind in fact it 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 actually it, it was done in such a way it actually said the opposite <laughs> we are going to have some opposite messages right now and then we'll get back straight ahead with Lauren Sheen and Chris you're in the Paracast. <laughs> Visit GCNlive.com today. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original and most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Message and data rates may apply. Oh my gosh, that's Frank Thomas. No. Yes, that's him. Go ahead. Excuse me, are you Frank Thomas? Yes, I am. I bet you get recognized a lot. I was a pretty good ball player. You were? Some people thought so. Sorry, we recognize you from those Nugenics commercials. Oh yeah? That's great. So does Nugenics really work? Oh yeah, I really can feel the difference. My workouts are better, and I feel a lot more energetic. I wish my husband would use Nugenics. It's so easy to get started. All you have to do is send one simple text. Text the word PRIME44 to 422. 424 for a complimentary bottle of award-winning Nugenics, the number one selling free testosterone booster at GNC. Its unique man-boosting formula is powered by Testofen, a patented key ingredient clinically researched to help a man feel stronger, leaner, more energetic, and more passionate. And you're going to like the difference, too. Text PRIME44 to 42424 for a complimentary bottle of Nugenics. Samples are not available in stores. Text PRIME44 to 42424. You haven't experienced yogurt until you've tried a Mossy, embodying health and flavor in a true whole milk, green-fed dairy beverage. Every sip pays homage to our old world cows and the ancient culturing methods their milk benefits from. With over 30 probiotics, a Mossy's undeniably nutritious, refined, cultured sensation bolsters your health and awakens your passion for dairy. A Mossy's so good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. Kiss your credit card debt goodbye. I'm Pharmacist Keith, Dr. Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy, and myself want to show you how to achieve financial peace, creating an extra income that will last for years to come by joining Dr. Wallach's crusade, spreading his message of better health. To learn more, visit radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com, radio.recordedvideo.com, or call 866-257-3105 for a recorded message. Hello, my name is Marjorie Wildcraft. I'm the founder of The Grow Network, which is an online community of people who produce their own food and medicine. We are really into backyard self-reliance. If you want this lifestyle, I suggest your first step be to learn some basic home medicine. Just the other day, my 18-year-old son came to me and said, Mama, I got a sore throat. Can you fix me up? 
And I said, sure, Ryan. And in about 24 hours, he was better. The best home medicine for you to start out with is garlic. It's an amazing natural antibiotic, and I can show you how to use garlic to handle ear infections, sore throats, colds, and flus. As a way for you to get to know a little bit more about me and the Grow Network, I've written up an easy introduction on how to use garlic. It's at gcnwellness.com. Now, the station manager told me that I needed to say the URL at least twice, even though it feels kind of weird. But if you're interested in backyard self-reliance, you are one of us. Go to www.gcnwellness.com and let's connect up. Hi, this is Joshua P. Warren, author of The Poor Man's Paranormal, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. You know, speaking of looking to original sources and finding them to be so totally different, I know that Kevin Randall has done a lot of that going back to original sources for UFO cases. Not just what's in the book, but what the book refers to, which quite often may be something in another book, but finding the original source. After it goes through like, you know, three or four authors, it's kind of like this old shtick that the late Steve Allen used to do on his TV show, where he'd have somebody tell a joke whisper it in somebody's ear. And the job of that person would be to repeat the same joke, whisper it in somebody's ear, and they go through 10 generations of this. And by the time they got to the 10th generation, they asked that person who received the distilled version of the original joke to repeat it. And it had very, very vague resemblance to the original. Yeah, the old telegram game. We all telephone. use telephone, telegram. I'm older than you, maybe. So what's the new book's name, Chris? Well, it came out a couple of years ago, Stock in the Herd. It's the kind of the uh, encyclopedia sort of go-to textbook on the cattle cattle death. Okay, Let's I'll see. have to look that up. Yeah, I, do, I go to great lengths in there to prove that uh, there was something to the case. Uh, I didn't set out to do that. It's just the way that when I started checking further into the case and started checking quotes and stuff, um, stuff just didn't wasn't adding up, so I, I continued digging, and uh, and lo and behold, I found out that uh, not only was the case probably real, but uh, twelve members of the of the town, the bankers, the lawyers, the you know the professional people, all signed affidavits to uh, the honesty of Alexander Hamilton. Quite the opposite of uh, you know being in a liars club. Yeah, and that's why in uh, Mothman, my new Mothman book. Uh, Winkle's chapter looks at Heal's book because it does have mistakes in it. And, you know, you go back to original sources and you get rid of all of that contamination. Yeah, you do a great job of doing that, of going in there and and really digging down, drilling down and where where all the particular information comes up. And, and you, it's amazing now how much uh, disparity there is between one version and the next. Uh, it's... Uh, it's good to get all these things, uh, all these uh, facts, and and people's quotes and everything straight. I think it's really important that uh, that more work is done by up and coming investigators and researchers and writers out there to to get stuff as as accurately as possible uh, down. And a lot of that has to do with getting the the actual original quotes, get them down, read them back to the witness before you go on, um, which is something that I found myself doing more and more is writing down a quote and then reading it back to them to make sure that you got it right. And, uh, you know, nine times out of 10, I would, but then occasionally someone would say, well, maybe if you say it this way, it's more accurate, or, or why don't you change that to this? It gives them an opportunity to become as accurate as they can as well. And that way, and the same with release forms, when, when your lawyers for your publisher is saying, well, you mention this person's name, you got to get a release form from them. On all my books, what I would do is I'd write down and send to them the exact language, uh, languaging that would be used in their quote and ask them to sign off on it and sign the release form. So people were not only giving me permission to use their name and use a quote, but they were signing off on the actual quote. <laughs> yeah. And that way you're eliminating, eliminating all sorts of potential problems down the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I really encourage young up and coming cryptozoologists in training like Colin 
to really not rehash old stories, but really go back, either develop their own new sources, develop new sources from new cases, or if you're going to deal with an old case, go back to the original people or the original sources. A lot of people, of course, have died. The original newspaper articles or affidavits or, or things like even police reports that weren't really looked at back then, some of those are online, and it's good to do that. Yeah, it, it puts your work into a little bit more uh, higher regard. And also, like I said, it alleviates all sorts of potential problems down the road. You know, I've, I've always felt that um, if you're going to include somebody's name, it's got to be a, a positive thing for them, uh, um, as well as, you know, helping bolster your work. It's also uh, giving that person a chance to go on the record, and especially law enforcement and public officials. Um, I think it's it's doubly important to make sure you get everything accurate and, and give them the option of, of signing off on, on something or, or remaining anonymous. It's kind of a dance that we do out there and <laughs> trying to get people to go on the record. We want them on the record, but, you know, if you can't get yeah. them on the record, at least be accurate with their quotes. Because, in fact, if we're writing a book with some monsters and cryptids and all these other things in it, we also use these law enforcement people and ministers and teachers as some of the most credible witnesses. Right. It may be, it may be a fallacy because I think some of the truck drivers and housewives and house husbands and, and you know, other people that are just kind of mundane to most individuals that are trying to be so skeptical actually give the best details sometimes. Yeah. But we do all of that. And we get that, and then we use them in our books to say this person said that, and they were credible. So um, you know, we have to be respectful of them. Yeah. I, I found that outdoors people, hunters, uh, hikers, climbers, oh, yeah. uh, they, they also make very, very good witnesses because there's a much more, much more attentive and, and much more aware of their surroundings. Right. And voters for sea serpents and things like that. So the person that knows their environment the best— in whatever way. Like yeah. that's why truck drivers that I've interviewed about long distance truck drivers that see Black Panthers crossing the roads and, and stuff like that. Some are the best eyewitnesses. Yeah, well these guys they drive, you know, thousands of miles a week. So Yeah. They'll definitely notice something that sticks out, you know, that's not normal, like a, a, a Panther sighting. I don't know about the credibility of forty and writers and radio show hosts though. <laughs> Right. Well, it's a lifelong uh, pursuit of, uh, you know, to get that credibility. <laughs> right. I, I just got a case that was very interesting. It was a cow that totally it reminded me. You, you brought up Snippy earlier. It reminded me of Snippy. I mean, all the, the the lips were there at the very tip and the tip of the nose, but everything else was gone to the shoulders. And, uh, and it did look like a cat kill. It looked like a cat had burrowed in right at the base of the neck where it, it met the, uh, um, the back. And um, this is a case that's coming out of, uh, I think, Panama City, uh, Florida. But you mentioned cats, and I'm, I'm sure it looks like a cat kill to me, like a jaguar or something got this thing. I should send you pictures, and maybe you could take a look at it for me and help uh, help me advise these people because they're pretty freaked out. It's Eight acres right in the middle of a residential area. Nobody heard a thing. Dogs didn't freak out. Horses didn't freak out. And this thing got uh, really horribly attacked. <laughs> it's pretty inexplicable how it could happen. I know the Florida Panthers are uh, there. They really know where every one of those are in Florida. So that might be a, an angle to look at. Yeah, I, I did. I did. I'm, I'm in the midst of doing that. And over oh, Jaguars, too. There are some Jaguars down there. Yeah. Jaguars are smaller, though. I don't think a jaguar is going to be attacking a full-grown cow. Yeah, well, jaguars or jagamundes. Or whatever they are, the spotted cats. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I think they have jaguars down there. They aren't supposed to. No? They, no, they may be escaped leopards. There's a whole zoo population down there. Yeah, true. Now, a leopard could bring down a cow. Oh, yeah. They're big enough. They bring it's it just a weird case. I haven't seen a case like it in in uh, in twenty plus years. So I'm gonna I'll, I'll go ahead and send you the uh, images if you sure that'd be interesting. If you've had your 
breakfast already. I wouldn't want to go shopping for breakfast. Because of the International Cryptozoology Museum that we have in Portland, Maine, I get lots of cases all the time. So I bet, yeah. We're going to do this break and then come back for a final segment with Lauren Coleman and Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low cost plans put your sites on high performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Anytime, any place, anywhere, radio remains the most intimate of all forms of media. At home, at work, in the car, on smartphones. Over 90% of consumers still listen to radio every week. That makes choosing radio as a place to advertise your business one of the best decisions you can make. Email advertise at GCNlive.com and partner up with an experienced GCN representative. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. Age-related macular degeneration is a leading cause of blindness in people over 55, but with treatment it can be slowed down, stopped, and in some cases reversed. Make sure you see your grandchildren grow. Protect your vision by requesting information about diagnosing and treating AMD. Call the Foundation Fighting Blindness today at 1-800-BLINDNESS for a free packet on reversing or managing AMD. Or go to the website fightblindness.org where I found so much helpful information. Or again, call 1-800-BLINDNESS today. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. 800-667-9035. That's 800-667-9035. If you or someone you care about loves outdoor adventure, then check out slingbow.com for some unique holiday gift ideas. That's slingbow.com, where we have some innovative new products for the archer, hunter, or bow fishing enthusiast in your family. Now through January, use the promo code HOLIDAY to get free shipping in the U.S. or Canada. And from all of us at Slingbow Industries, have a safe, joyous, and peaceful holiday season. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio.
Lauren Coleman, yes. question I always ask, and I don't know if there's ever going to be an answer. Are we ever going to solve any of this stuff? Bigfoot, Mothman, whatever. Well, one of the positive things about being in cryptozoology, part of cryptozoology is really a mission to find new species. A lot of cryptozoology is based on investigating ethno-known stories, tales, sightings, whatever. So a lot of new animals are being found based upon native, indigenous, local people who say that there's something there, other people not believing them, but then finding the right people to go look for them. And so some cases are being solved. I think that whenever you get into the more fringe elements of cryptozoology, like Mothman, a Dover Demon, you know, the cases I've been involved with uh, on the fringe, some of those cases are just going to be unknowns for a long time. I don't feel like I'm any closer to solving anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that part of why I wrote the book is that there's this whole other area about the Mothman that is being solved. I think if you look at how evil Mothman has been for several years, the whole town of Point Pleasant has really turned it around. Crypto tourism as making money and saving a little river bank community that was going down the tubes. They're saving them. They're getting more commerce in there. They're getting more friendly tourists in. And it's, it's changing Mothman from an evil creature into not a lot of money for those people, but survival. Yeah, at least let's make it fun and not too uh, dark and disturbing and exactly spooky. Make it a celebration of some sort. As one of the Chamber of Commerce people down there said when he was kind of challenged, well, why do you do the Mothman? They, they don't exist. And the Chamber of Commerce guy said, look, I don't care if they exist or not. There's 10,000 people came to our festival, and that makes me happy. Yeah. And if 10,000 people came, they exist. Absolutely. Something does. Well, the you know, it's like Roswell. The closer you get to Roswell, about 50 miles out, you start st seeing the alien faces, you know. And then you get 25, 30 miles out there everywhere. And you get into Roswell. Even the country and western clothing stores have uh, mannequins of aliens dressed up as cowboys. As long as Point Pleasant doesn't go where everything you – everywhere you look, it's all Mothman all the time. Uh, that would be a little – that would be a little disconcerting, I think. It's bad enough, Roswell, with all those little alien faces everywhere. It's, it makes me break out in, in a rash, and I can't find exactly where to scratch it. And the problem <laughs> is Chris may want to do something rash. Uh, well, the Mothman hasn't overtaken Point Pleasant that much, but it's oh, a friendly creature there now. Well, yeah, you see, the true. thing I worry about, though, here is if Mothman has inspired all this tragedy around it, especially in the original event, the collapse of the bridge and the people who died after. Do you think maybe they're not tempting the gods there in having this event, making Mothman warm and fuzzy? If we make Mothman warm and fuzzy, do you think Mothman may come back and bite those who try to feed it? Well, the one cautionary tale that I have to tell about that is on my Mothman death list, the first suicide uh, that has occurred at the Mothman Festival happened last year. So that's something to watch. Uh, the Mothman Festival only has existed since the movie. And they were kind of shocked that somebody would actually go to the water and just jump in. And they did the traditional thing with suicides. He took his shoes off and put them calmly on the bank and then jumped in. Of course, they want to be neat. Chris lives in this strange place. What do I do now? Well, you live in a place that's being attacked by Mothman, right? Or Bigfoot or... No, no, just all these feral cats. <laughs> mystery cats. Yeah, mystery okay. cats, right. So we have, a, we have a kitty drug dealer here who's got a whole yard of catnip or something because there's cats everywhere here. You know, that reminds me when we used to live at that double wide in Mesa. You visited the place a couple of times. And we were being visited endlessly by families of cats and barbara felt bad so she said why don't you put out like a bowl with food and maybe some get some cat food and some water and i said you're going to have those cats there permanently they're not going to go away which was true yeah. finally when we moved out 
we arranged with the rescue club to have those cats taken in and rescued and find new owners for them. So I guess we did a good thing. Speaking of cats, I'm not a big cat thing, but the cat would sometimes, one of the cats took a liking to me, would come up to me waiting for the food. And Teddy Bear, our Bichon, didn't seem bothered by them. Gene, Chris, I want to thank you for inviting me on your program. Well, anytime. It's always fun to have you on, Lauren. You know that. We love having you on. You're one of our favorite guests. Well, thank you. Well, I like that you were interested in my book, and I hope you got your copies okay. Some people have. I did, and I got my ticket to the museum and my sticker. Oh, good. I got it in my, my postcards, which well, shall all be used uh, in in, appro- you know, in an appropriate manner in a proper place. There's no expiration date. Come anytime you can. Yeah, and you even sign the book for me. I love it. Good. Yeah, I got my package right here. The book is right there in front of me with all the extra stuff. So now I'm forced yeah. to somehow find a way to travel from here to get there <laughs> and see your place before yeah, I'm too we- old. Right. The museum's going to be there even if I'm not, you know, even if I pass on to Mothman land or Bigfoot land. But I don't plan to do that for another 10, 15, 20 years. So a lot of well, people, that's good to know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a rough patch, but I'm feeling better now. So do you have any new projects coming up after this that we should know about? Oh, I have always do have new projects. I've I've signed a couple contracts, one for a, a general cryptozoology book, another book on uh, Twilight language, my interest in kind of the name game and all of that. Well, actually, there's a n- book coming out on the Big Muddy Monster in southern Illinois. I did the introduction to that. I've already done that. But, you know, other people take some time publishing books. I look forward to that. And then what I'm doing is traveling a lot these days, going to San Francisco. I've been invited to Hawaii and Minnesota and Texas to give talks on Bigfoot or Mothman. So that's been a lot of fun. Nice. Well, traveling keeps you young. Yeah, it does. You have to to fight TSA and the inspections. And <laughs> I only have one rule. I never travel on Southwest anymore because every time I try to race anybody, I, I end up next to the bathroom at the back. So. Yeah. <laughs> you have to call in 24 hours before your flight. Exactly. As soon as that 24 hours to the second, you got to call in, then you can get in one of the, the first groups to get seated. Um, I like Southwest because I can bring two suitcases and not get charged. No. <laughs> Lauren, if someone wants to get in touch with you, where do they contact you? Probably the best bet is cryptozoologymuseum.com. There's an email address on there. There's contact information on there. And it tells them how to stop and actually see me face-to-face at the museum in Portland, Maine. Indeed. I've got the ticket here. Chris has his ticket. Somehow this has to be worked out. You can find us on Twitter if you look for the Paracast. You can find Chris at his site, OurStrangePlanet.com. You can also find us on Facebook with a pair of Paracast fan clubs, a group and a community. I'm not sure what the difference is, but I'm sure most of you know, so take your choice. We also have a second radio show after the Paracast, which can be special interviews, extended interviews, and you never know what's going to happen next. This week, for example, will feature Kurt Collins talking about his blog on the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program. It's only available if you join up with the Paracast Plus. Go to plus.theparacast.com. That's P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com for more information. We also give you a version of this show with better quality audio without the network commercials. How about that? Low subscription price. Check it out. Do it now. Plus that, the Paracast.com. Lauren Coleman, it's been a while. Glad to have you back. And hearty, hail, and healthy. Thank you for joining us Thank on the you. Paracast. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Chris. Happy New Year. The Paracast. 
featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast. <laughs>